Hello and welcome to yet another lecture on power generation and economics. Myself, Koti Dora, Assistant Professor of the Shudhir Chandra Shudhir Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. So we have learned the different types of tariffs and only we have concentrated in our previous lecture on simple tariff or for the uniform rate tariff, flat rate tariff, block rate tariff and two part tariff and we also discuss about the advantages and the disadvantages of those tariffs along with the calculation of amount of rupees consumer have to pay depending upon the different types of tariffs and also the unit consumer. Today, we will discuss about maximum demand tariff, power factor tariff and three part tariff. And also we will see some mathematical examples, numerical problems, how we can able to calculate the tariff. So let's start with maximum demand tariff. The maximum demand tariff is similar to two-part tariff with only one difference that the maximum demand is actually measured by installing maximum demand meter in the premises of the consumers. That one of the areas that we have seen in case of the designing of a two-part tariff is that uh, one price is the consumer actually given on the base of maximum demand and the second one is the second part is the first part and the second part is the amount of energy consumed. So in case of the maximum demand that we have seen that all the consumers have a different maximum demand. But though he or she has not reached, reached that maximum demand, but still he or she has to pay for that particular demand. So there are different types of maximum demand can be measured with the help of installing a maximum demand meter in the premises of the consumer so that for that particular demand, he or she, for the particular unit, for a particular person having a particular maximum demand, he or she has to pay for that particular demand. So the advantage is that the, this removes the objection of two part tariff that we have just discussed. There is an objection in case of the maximum demand measurement in case of the two part tariff that can be easily nullified. And this type of tariff is mostly applied to the big consumers. However, the disadvantage is that from there, from that particular thing that this type of tariff is used in the case of big consumers, the disadvantages of that tariff is not suitable for small consumers as a separate maximum demand meter is required. The small consumer is a residential consumer. This is not applicable for the residential consumer because for their separate maximum demand meter is required. So, in order to overcome the problems of the maximum demand in case of calculating the two-part tariff, the conception of maximum demand tariff is arrived whether we can able to measure the maximum demand of each consumer by installing a maximum demand meter in the premises of the consumer. But it solved the problem for the deficiency that but they are in the case of two partners. But the problem is that it is applicable for the big consumer, but for small consumer like residential consumer. A separate maximum demand meters are required. So another important tariff is called the power factor tariff. The tariff in which the power factor of the consumer's load taken into the consideration is called the power factor tariff. So the power factor is the important phenomenon by design the tariff. So we have to take the power factor of the system in consideration. So if we consider the power factor of the system, we also consider the corresponding tariff for that power factor of the load, consumer load. So, in order to take consideration of the power factor of the consumer load 
another type of tally which is called the power factor tally is also desired. So, a low power factor that is increasing the rating of the station equipment and line losses. This is known to us. That's why we are designing a power factor tally because a low power factor increases the rating of station equipment that increases the station equipment rating and also the line losses. Therefore, a consumer having a low power factor must be penalized. Consumer having a low power factor must be penalized. So, what are the different types of power factor tariff? First one is the KVA maximum given tariff. So, it is the modification of the two part tariff. In this case, fixed charges are made on, on the basis of maximum demand KVA and not in kilowatt. So in order to modify the two part tariff, the charges, the fixed charges are made on the basis of maximum demand that is in KVA, not in kilowatt. This is called the KVA maximum demand tariff. So this type of tariff has the advantage that it encourages the consumers to operate their appliances and the machinery at input power factor. This is called the KVA maximum demand tariff. And the next one is the sliding scale tariff. So what is sliding scale tariff? This is also known as the average power factor tariff. In this case, an average power factor, say 0.8 lagging, is taken as a reference. So we are taking a reference power factor that is 0.8 lagging as an average power factor in order to form the sliding scale tariff. It's taken as a reference. If the power factor of the consumer falls below this power factor, suitable additional charges are made or if the power factor of the consumer is above the reference, a discount is allowed to the consumer. Since we are taking an average value of the power factor as a reference, say 0 0.8. If a consumer having a power factor falls below that power factor, so he or she has to charge a suitable additional charge or she has to give it. But if the if a consumer having a power factor having a reference more than the reference value, so it will give a discount to those consumers. That is why you are designing a sliding scale tariff. Third one is the kilowatt or KVA tariff. So in this type of tariff, both the kilowatt and the KVRs are charged separately in a half. Means both kilowatt and KVA are charged separately. A consumer having a low power factor will draw more reactive power and hence shall have to pay more charges. Means the low power factor means he or she will draw the more reactive power for that reactive power conception. So he or she have to pay for that reactive power. The conception KVAR charge is there. Active power, the kilowatt charge is there, all the loads. But if you draw more reactive power for a less power factor, for a less power factor, for a low power factor, he or she have to pay the KVA. So there are three types of tariff. One is known as KVA maximum demand tariff. And there is a sliding scale tariff, and there is a kilowatt and KVA tariff in the power factor tariff. So, third one is the three part tariff. So, three part tariff is that when the total charge is to be made from the consumers, the name suggests that it is split into the three parts. Fixed charge one, the second one is the same fixed charge, and the third one is the running charge. It is known as three part tariff. That means it is divided into the three parts. One is the fixed charge, one is the semi fixed charge, and the third one is the running charge. So total charges is the summation of A plus B into kilowatt plus C into kilowatt hour. But A is the Fixed charge including the interest and depreciation on the cost of secondary distribution and labor cost of the collecting revenues. So, labor cost, including the interest and depreciation cost, those are known as the fixed charge. The B term B is that the charge per kilowatt of maximum demand. Charge per kilowatt maximum demand. 
the sales, the charge per kilowatt hour of energy consumed. Charge per kilowatt hour for energy consumed. So, if I draw the conception of the three part tariff, the total, the three, if I draw the conception of three part tariff, find that the total charges that consumer have to pay for a three part carry to the charges due to the rupees with the fixed charge class that I have discussed B into kilowatt plus C into kilowatt hour I have told that A is the fixed charge during billing period. It will include the interest and the depreciation of the cost of secondary distribution and labor cost of collecting dividends. This A and B is given by the charge per kilowatt of the maximum demand, and C is the charge per kilowatt of energy consumed. So it may seem that the adding of fixed charge on the consumer charge, that is A, to two part tariff, it becomes three part tariff. Means we are adding a fixed charge or consumer charge, that is A, with the two part tariff. The principal objection on this type of tariff is that the charges are split into three components. This type of tariff is generally applied to the big consumers. To the big consumers. So we have discussed about the today about the maximum demand tariff, the power factor tariff, and the classification that is the KVA maximum demand tariff, sliding sale tariff, and KVA kilowatt and KVA tariff. Now we will come to the another discussion of three part tariff and how we can get the energy. Now we will see some numerical problems. That tariff calculation. So first is given that a consumer, a consumer has a maximum demand of 200 kilowatt at 40 percent load factor. If the tariff is what is 100 per kilowatt of maximum demand, this 100 per kilowatt of maximum demand plus 10 paise per kilowatt find the overall cost per kilowatt. We have to find the overall cost per kilowatt. So let's start the problem. It is given that, so first we have to done the total amount of unit consumed. The total amount of unit consumed in an total amount of Unit that is consumed, total amount of unit consumed in an year. That is given as maximum demand, maximum demand into load factor. Total hours in a year. Total 
words in a day. So the maximum demand is given 200 in this equation. The load factor is given 0 0.4, 40%, that is 0 0.4. The total hour is 365 into 24, 365 days and 24 hours in a day is given 8760. So it is given that 7. Eight double zero, eight double zero kilo watt into the kilowatt hour. So the total unit consumed. So we have to find the overall cost per kilowatt hour. So. We have to find the overall cost per kilowatt hour. So, what is the annual charges? So, what is the annual charges? So, annual charges can be done by annual. Annual maximum demand charges. Annual maximum demand charges. Plus annual energy charges. Charges. So, what is the annual maximum demand charges? It is given that maximum demand is 200 kilowatt and the charge is 100 kilowatt, 100 per, which is 100 per, 100 per kilowatt. It is given that, it is given that the maximum demand is 20 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt and the tariff is 100 per kilowatt. And plus 10 paisa per kilowatt hour. So the maximum demand is 200 charges will be 200 into 100. And the total energy consumed 10 paisa per year is 0 0.1 into 1 into 2 and more energy consumed that we have just calculated 700800 so total is fine on this total is on this rupees nine zero so our motto is to find the overall cost per kilowatt hour. We have to find the overall cost per kilowatt hour. So how you will find the overall cost per kilowatt hour? So Cost per kilowatt hour means they have to mark divided the total cost that is nine zero.
zero comma zero is zero that we have just calculated. Zero is zero. That should be divided by okay, by our water that consumes that is seven zero zero eight double zero. That is rupees. In the rupees. 0 0.1285 so that is 12.85 paisa So another problem is given that the maximum demand of a consumer is 20 ampere at QQ zero volt, and his total energy consumption is 8760 kilowatt hour. If the energy is charged at a rate of 20 paisa per unit for 500 hours, choose of the maximum demand per annum plus 10 paisa per unit for additional units. Calculate number one annual bill, number two equivalent flat rate. So, we are assuming a load factor of unit. So, what is the maximum demand? Maximum demand is the total amount of energy consumed maximum demand is the total amount of energy consumed so uh, what is this that is given that is a 220 volt di into cos phi so 220 into 20 ampere into cos phi equal to one per factor okay so this is in order to convert it it is a watt into kilowatt divided by thousand it is 4.4 kilowatt okay so it is given that if the energy charges at a rate of 20 paisa per unit for 5000 hours the total amount of unit consumed in 5000 hours is 4.4 into 5 in 500 hours is the 20 paisa per 500 hours so unit consumed in 500 hours is 4.4 into 500 equal to Q to 0, 0 kilowatt hour. Okay. So what is the charges for 2 to 0, 0 kilowatt hour? It is given at 20 paisa per unit for 5000 hours. So it is 0.2 rupees into 2 to 0, 0 equal to 440 rupees. So I think till now it is understood. The charges for 2 to 0, 0 hour. Is a 20 paisa per unit of 500 hours. Now, what is the remi remaining unit? The total energy consumed is 8760. So, remaining unit is 8760 minus 2200 is 6560 kilowatt hour. Okay, so this 6560 kilowatt hour is charged as a 10 paisa per unit. It is given clearly written that if the energy is charged at a rate of 20 paisa unit for 500 hours, use of the maximum demand per nm plus 10 paise per unit of the additional units because additional unit is 6560 kilowatt hour and rupees 0 0.1 into 6560 is so rupees 656 so total annual bill is 440 rupees plus 656 equal to rupees 1096 this is our first problem solution solution of the first problem is the total annual bill 20 paise per uh, unit for 500 hours and 10 percent for the remaining units. And the equivalent flat rate. So, what is the flat rate? The equivalent flat rate is the total amount, total rupees that we have paid, that it's the total cost of the annual bill 1096 by the total energy consumed is the 
8760 kilowatt so 1096 by 8760 equal to rupees 0.125 is the 12.5 percent So today we have learned about the different tariffs like maximum demand tariff, power factor tariffs and the classifications. Means the KVA maximum demand tariff, so live scale tariff, and kilowatt or KVA tariff, and also the feedback tariff. And how a consumer can pay using those tariffs. And also we have seen the numerical problems with tariff calculation. Thank you.